Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Hope you've all been doing well, and Happy New Year. In this video, we'll be comparing two of AMD's stock coolers against each other, the Wraith Prism versus the Wraith Stealth. Now, a while back, I ended up purchasing a Ryzen 5 3600, which was on for a great deal at my local computer parts store. I planned on making a second gaming rig, one that will be connected to a 4K TV. I'll be showing you guys that build in another upcoming video, as the topic of this video is about the coolers. With the Ryzen 5 3600, AMD this generation bundled the Wraith Stealth for the cooler. Previously, with older generation CPUs in this tier, such as the Ryzen 5 1600 and Ryzen 5 2600, AMD would bundle the Wraith Spire cooler. There is a noticeable difference between the Stealth and Spire cooler. Shape-wise, they're the same, however, the Spire is much taller with a more surface area and a copper core in the middle. It performed better than the Stealth in regards to dissipating heat. I was surprised to see the 3600 come with an inferior cooler this generation, thinking that maybe perhaps it was uh, because the 3600 was already sufficient enough being on 7 nanometers. However, you'll see later in this video perhaps this wasn't the smartest choice from AMD, and it probably would have been wise to just stick with the Wraith Spire at the very least. Now with the Ryzen 9 3900X, AMD bundled the Wraith Prism cooler, which for a stock cooler is actually pretty good. You not only get this cooler with the Ryzen 9, but both the Ryzen 7 3700X and 3800X also come with this cooler, and rightfully so as these CPUs have more cores in them, so there's going to be a lot more heat to dissipate there. Since my Ryzen 9 3900X is already being cooled with a Noctua NHD15, I didn't end up needing the Wraith Prism, so I thought I might as well put it to good use and give my 3600 an upgrade. The Wraith Prism has a lot more aluminum surface area, it's a lot taller, and even has direct copper contact heat pipes. Oh, and it has RGB as well. Overall, it's a much more beefier cooler compared to the Wraith Stealth, and should perform better in pretty much all the scenarios. So let's go ahead and see just how much of a difference there is between the two CPU coolers in various scenarios. But first, let's do a quick rundown on the test system specs. For the CPU, we've got the Ryzen 5 3600, as I've already mentioned, paired with 16GB of G-Skill Trident Z memory running at 3200MHz CL14. For the motherboard, we've got the Gigabyte X370 Gaming 5. The CPU was running at stock with PBO and auto OC disabled. As for the graphics card, I've got the MSI RTX 2080 Super Gaming X Trio model, and for the power supply, we've got a Corsair Vengeance 750M. I tested both of the CPU coolers on just an open test bench, aka the motherboard box, so there were no other external thermal factors like cases or case fans involved. They were tested in an environment with an ambient room temperature of 21 degrees Celsius. Moving on to the results, there will be four scenarios I want to show you guys. We'll first be looking at the temps while idle on desktop. Both the Wraith Prism and Wraith Stealth averaged around 34 degrees while idle, however, the, th the Stealth peaked at 49 degrees while the Prism stayed cooler by 7 degrees at 42. Next, we've got ourselves a fairly heavy CPU stress test, IDA64, which was left running for an hour. The test here will show us the worst case scenario for these CPU coolers. You're hardly ever going to see these kinds of loads uh, with figures like these under a real world scenario. Although it is something good to keep in mind and lets us see how well or bad the coolers do under an extreme load like this. For the Wraith Stealth, things really aren't looking too good. The CPU runs quite toasty under this stress test, where it averaged the CPU temp of around 90 degrees and peaked at 99 degrees, which is very hot. And this is stock, nothing is overclocked. When we take a look at the Wraith Prism, it seems to be doing better, but temps are still on the warmer side, where the cooler averaged 79 degrees and peaked at 89. While the Ryzen 5 3600 is a very efficient CPU, it sure does run hot. But like I said, this is a pretty heavy stress test, so let's move on to some real world scenarios. With Blender, we'll be able to see how the CPU coolers perform in a scenario where the user might be doing some production work, which can be quite heavy on the CPU. With the Wraith Stealth, the Ryzen 5 3600 averaged around 87 degrees and peaked at 92 degrees. Not as bad as when we were running Ida64, but these temps are still warmer than what I'd be comfortable with. Now, if we take a look at the Wraith Prism, the temps here are much better, 75 degrees Celsius for the average and 79 for the peak temps. So if you plan on doing some heavy production work with the Ryzen 5 3600, I would highly recommend upgrading from that stock cooler to prevent the CPU from running so hot. For our last scenario, we'll be taking a look at a game, and for this test I've chosen Shadow of the Tomb Raider. When it comes to a 3D application like a game, there is a lot more variance when it comes to temperatures for the CPU, as there will be parts where 
they're going to be more heavier on the CPU, making it harder and raising the temps, and some where the CPU doesn't have as heavy of a load on it. But for the most part, the GPU is what will be doing most of the work here. It's not like a production app like Blender where all the cores are loaded up to near 100% for the render. So these 10-15 degree swings are pretty normal. The Wraith Stealth in this scenario provides us with what I'd say are acceptable temps. 62 degrees for the average while peaking out at 76 degrees. Like I mentioned, it's probably those heavy swings the game has. The Wraith Prism performs better here as well, where the average temperature is 4 degrees cooler at 58, and the 3600 peaked at 69 degrees here. So there you guys have it. After seeing the results, we can say for certain that the Wraith Prism is considerably better than the Wraith Stealth, but I'm sure this doesn't come as a surprise. What I will say though is that AMD really should have given a better cooler with the Ryzen 5 3600. Aside from a typical light browsing workload or gaming, with anything more CPU intensive, the temperatures drastically increase and the processor operates warmer than what I'd really be comfortable with. With temps into the high 80s and low 90s, I would say you're better off spending maybe an extra 30 bucks or so and getting a Cooler Master Hyper 212 EVO which would be able to handle the processor much better in those scenarios. But at that point, you're already at the same price if not very close to the 3600X, so why not just get that then, which would come with a much better cooler as well. At the very least though, I guess it's nice to say they still included a cooler to get you going, but man I really wasn't expecting it to be this bad. So I'm happy that I still had the Wraith Prism laying around because in terms of what my needs are for this processor, it should be enough. But like I said, if you are going to be using the 3600 as your daily driver, you want good thermals along with better acoustics, definitely look into upgrading the cooler. I mean, the CPU usually goes for around 190 bucks, so it's not too expensive to begin with, and you're most definitely getting a lot of bang for the buck here, I can totally vouch for that. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it informative. Let me know your thoughts down below. Check out the video description for my other videos and ways to support the channel. If you're interested in more content like this, then make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you in the next one.